So we may do a balance practice. So if you want a chair nearby also, you might want to do that. But first we're gonna do our regular warm up. So feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead, hips open, sitting bones down to keep that nice pelvic opening. Ribs in and up for that core support, letting your spine get nice and supple. Shoulders back and down so that the heart stays open as well. And then just reach your crown to the ceiling, keep that spine nice and open as we go through our spine. So take a few moments to breathe, drawing your awareness inward, remembering, of course, that it's a personal practice. So draw in energy and awareness. And exhale any tension and just allow yourself to focus in your yoga frame. And then inhaling, bring your arms to shoulder level, stretch way out and up through the ground. Exhale, hands to your heart, elbows back. Stretch forward and keep your shoulders down. Hands behind, just gently clasp the fingers and lift your arms. You can press the palms together if you want. And then pivoting at your hips, come on, exhaling over into a forward bend. And just as deep as your back likes this morning, you bring your hands toward your head, you'll get a little bit more shoulder width. You can straighten your knees for your hamstrings and back of your legs, or keep them bent. And then with your chin tucked in, we're going to lift the ribs as you drop the sitting bones and wind your spine back all the way up and look toward the ceiling. Keep the shoulders down, hands pressing toward the floor as you lift your heart. And then inhaling, come up, release your arms. Just take a moment, feeling your spine more energized as we work it out. And again, inhaling, reach out. Hands to your heart, elbows back, stretch to the front, shoulders down, and clasp your hands behind you the opposite way. And again, hands toward the floor as you lift and stretch, and pivot at your hips, exhaling open. And again, just relax in your forward bend as deeply as your back is wanting today. Let those hands come higher, maybe, for the shoulders. And again, when you're ready, just slowly work your way up, feeling that spine unwind, and move into the back bend. And again, heart high, stretch your head back, and just keep that heart open. And then inhale upright, release your arms. Take a moment, just feeling how your body is stimulated. And again, arms to shoulder level. Turn the palms toward the ceiling, bring the arms over your shoulders, hands past and clasp. And then arms by your ears, shoulders back down, sitting bones down, reach up through your head. Keep your shoulders, hips facing the front as you lean to the side for that lateral stretch. Push the foot you're leaning away from down to get an extra rib opening. And breathe, stretching out through your head and hands. And then inhaling, come back up, those shoulders down as you switch the other hand in front. And again, lengthen up through the spine, exhale, or lean to the other side. And once more, just stretch it out, pushing the foot down, breathing into those ribs that are open, and relaxing through the side that's contracting. And then again, inhaling back up, and release. Take a moment just feeling your obliques along the side, everything a little bit more stretched out. And again, arms up, palms toward the ceiling, over the shoulders, and clasp your elbows. Pull the arms back by your ears, sitting bones down, reach your head up for a twist, and exhale, feel. Keep the knees a little bent if you need to, keep the weight on both feet. Stretch long through your spine, and in your twist, just come over as deeply as your body wants. And relax. And if you're, of course, just keep shifting the weight into both feet as evenly as you can. And relaxing, arms by your ears. And then staying in your twist, work your way slowly up. If 
lift your heart, pull your elbows back, your shoulders down, and come into that upper body back bend, and then look gentle on the low back while you're twisting. Not a lot of work there. And then inhale upright, exhale back to the center, switch your arms around, and again, keep the arms next to your ears as you stretch everything up, and sitting bones down, and twist the up. So your whole body is moving into the twist, stretching up and exhaling over. So again, just deepen as much or as little on this side. See if you can notice things being a little different, perhaps. Relax. And again, staying in your twist, work your way back up. Right toward the ceiling, elbows back, shoulders down. And again, make sure that the low back isn't working hard while you're twisting. And then inhale to the top, exhale to the center, arms straight up, keep them there by your ears, pivot at your hips, and again, parallel to the floor if you can do that, stretch it out, sitting bones and crown away from each other, arms still by your ears, bow and then drop, red dog. Take a moment there, just breathing and relaxing, or pull in a little bit more if you want. And then release your arms, and roll one more time, all the way back into neck. So as you get back up, just feel your body more stimulated. You know, this has been working harder. And if you've got your strap, you might want to make sure that it's near you because we're going to be using it in a moment. So first we're going to do a balance warm-up. So get the base of the toes connected on the foot you're going to ground. Make sure your arch is lifting and the whole bottom of your foot inside, outside of the heel, the whole way across the base of your toes, but not the toes. Don't work with your toes or that loses that base that you get with that base of the toe area. Stack ankle, knee, hip, and shoulder. Reach the crown to the ceiling. Keep that core activated. So ribs in toward the spine and up toward your heart. And then sink into that foot. Bring the other foot a little bit or more or toward your heart. Remember, a little inner rotation on that thigh keeps that foot from crossing over toward your other leg. Now work your ankle around just to make sure it's working. Flex some point, and release that side. Shift to the other side, same thing. Get that real good stability there. Getting that foot lined up so that that inner rotation stacks the bones well, and maybe outside of the mat or whatever you're standing on, get that outside of your foot parallel so you know that that rotation is correct. Other leg also, so that when you lift it, it doesn't cross it. Sink into the foot, up through the crown, get the core activated for support, and when you're ready, again, just bring that other leg up. So pull it in if you want with your hands, or just leave it there wherever it is. It can be low, it's okay, and just work your ankle. Flex some point, and release. So as you get into both feet, get your strap. And then we're going to wrap the strap around the foot you're not grounding. So around the base of the toes. You can wrap it an extra time if you want it a little bit more secure. And you're going to keep pressing out through that base of the toe area on that foot. Other foot gets grounded just like we did before. So ankle, knee, hip. Everything lined up, that base of support through your foot. Core energized and supporting your spine. Shoulders relaxed. And then sink into that foot. And just keep that leg straight and pull on your strap to raise it up in front of you. So if that works, fine. If it's lower, that's okay too. And then we're just going to rotate it a little bit toward the side. And then back toward the center. And then you can either hold on to the strap or release it and slowly lower that leg. And get the strap ready for the other side. <clears throat> so again, 
right across the base of the toes, <clears throat> aligning everything. So remember that inner rotation helps everything stay aligned through your legs, through your body. <clears throat> Core active, sitting bones down, shoulder blades down, crown high, everything lengthening. And again, getting into that foot nice and secure. And when you're ready, just begin pulling on the strap as you raise your leg as high as it wants to go. So remember, as you're in that position, just step out and in if you need to. Bring your leg out to the side if that's working for your hip this morning. And then again, back in. And releasing or not, slowly lower the leg. So a little bit more warmed up maybe through those hips. And then putting your strap down, we're going to get ready for our floor. So go ahead and stretch up, pivot forward, swan dive, nice flat back, and then drop into ragdoll. Slide your hands up under your knees, get that flat back stretch. You can keep the chin tucked in for the back of your neck stretching as well. And then bending your knees, coming all the way down, we're going to go into our transition in child's pose. So hips on your heels, hands next to your feet, <clears throat> forehead toward the mat. And just relax as you come into that forward bend <clears throat> while I get a little water from my foot. Okay, sit up on your heels, bring your legs up to the front, and onto your sitting bones, <clears throat> press out through the heels, and come into staff position. So remember, core activated for support, spine nicely aligned, and shoulders relaxing, hands at your sides or on your lap, and make sure that the strap is within reach. So go ahead and Warm up the hip rotators a little bit because we're going to be working them even more than we did while we were standing. <clears throat> so bring up your foot onto your opposite leg. This leg in front, knee and toes up toward the ceiling. Now remember, you can get into the front of the sitting bones more easily <clears throat> if you move that leg over to the side or you put some padding behind you to kind of tip you forward. So choose your position, whatever's right for you, and just let this knee come down so that that outside of that hip gets a little bit more range of motion. <clears throat> and just breathe and relax. And then when you're ready, you can bring the hand onto your ankle and the other one on your knee to move back and forth for that hip rotator fluid to get warmed up or pull it in with your arms around it. Keep your spine, remember, straight, so no rounding forward as you do that, whichever position you're in. So keep the crown up if you need to keep just holding on to the ankle and knee to make that facilitated feel free. And as you get that hip rotator warmed up a little so that that fluid more, more easily helps it move, move your foot up and in closer if you want to Feel a little bit more doing some work. And then release that leg and feel the difference between that side and the other side. So we have to work on warming that other side up. So again, sitting bones situated and bring the other foot up onto your foot. And again, you may find one side easier than the other. Just notice habitually we use our bodies in various ways that are not symmetrical. So very often one side is easier and the other one is a little bit more tense and tight. The secret, remember, to yoga is relaxing the muscles so that they'll give you a little bit more movement, a little bit more flexibility and stretch. Again, knees up and toes up if you move that foot out to the side. And get a little further into that of your sitting bones so that your pelvis is a little bit more tilted for that release through the hip joint. 
And again, just breathe and relax, just allowing gravity to pull this knee toward the floor. It doesn't need to get there. Mine isn't on this side. That's still really tight through that joint for me. So breathe and relax. And again, when you're ready, we'll move it a little bit more. So hands on the knee and ankle. We're pulling it in with your arms around, whichever way is working for you. So again, as it starts to get a little bit more lubricated and easy, lift the leg higher or pull it closer or neither or both, whatever you choose. Just allow your body to do what it needs to do. And again, just release back into staff position. Feel the core, make sure that it's still supporting your spine. You don't want to be slumping as we're in this position. Strap tight. So again, we're going to bend one knee and put the strap again around that base of the toe area. <clears throat> Once more, you can wrap it a little bit more if that's going to be more stable for you. And we're just going to keep pushing out through the bottoms of both feet and pivot this one up. And just like we did when we were standing, we're going to bring that leg further out to the side. So remember, everything here stays, both sitting bones basically still on the mat as you bring that leg into its open position. And then again, rotate it back to the front and release it down. So feel the difference again between the two sides as we do that. And we'll strap around the other foot. So again, starting on the sitting bones and mountain pose, core activated, spine lengthening up, pushing out through both feet and lifting the strap down. And again, just as high as it wants to go, maybe about head level. And when you're ready, again, just gently rotate it out. And again, back to the center. And release. So once more, just notice we worked a little bit through that hip pelvic area, and we're going to get on our backs and do a little bit more. So keep the strap handy and go ahead and roll onto it. So just take a moment there, inclined integration, breathing and relaxing, and just allowing your body to sink into that surface movement. So before we begin using our strap, <clears throat> we're just going to warm up that back area a little bit more. So press the sitting bones toward your heels, bend your knees, draw those heels in near your hips. And then slide the whole spine onto the floor so the sitting bones are a little closer to your heels. And then roll the sitting bones back down, letting the ribs come up and onto your shoulder blades so that your back is in a little back bend there. So just a little back strengthener and abdominal tone. So just lifting as high through the ribs as you want as you arch into that back bend. And then exhaling, pressing down, kind of pulling the front ribs toward the floor a little bit more as you go into the spine on the floor position. And just a few times, this is a really good strengthening exercise for your spine and your core. And we want to make sure our core is prepared to work for us today. And then just coming back to neutral position and extending your legs back up. So take a moment there and relax and find your strength. <clears throat> so we're going to bend one knee and bring the strap around the base of the toes on that leg. And then just extend your leg back up. So again, sitting bones toward your heels, back connected, and keeping the leg as straight as it wants to be, go ahead and bring that leg up toward the seat. <clears throat> so as you're there, just 
relax your back down into the mat. See if you can keep the hip on that other leg down as well. You can put your hand on that hip to make sure that it stays connected. Or you can hold both hands around your strap either way. And then just kind of gently pull the kneecap toward your thigh and tighten the front of your thigh. That's going to help that hamstring release and allow you to keep that leg as straight as possible. And then just bring the leg maybe a little bit pivoted closer toward the direction of your hand. So wherever it is, just practice relaxing. So relax through the back of your leg. Relax through the shoulders. Relax through everything on that opposite side. And just let that leg come toward you. So if you're super flexible, it may get further into not straight up and down. Either way is okay. And then hold the strap in the same hand as your legs. So I've got my right leg up, my right hand holds the strap. I'm bringing the left hand out at shoulder level. You can put a palm down for a little bit more stability there. Or you can leave the palm up, either way works. And then we're just going to rotate the leg over to the side. So keep pulling on the base of the toes with that foot flex as you bring the leg over toward the side. It may not reach the floor, that's okay. If you need to put your hand on the other, your left hand on your left hip to keep that hip down, you can do that, or you can just keep that on at that shoulder level. Now, as you're in that position, what you want to do is you want to let this inner thigh area particularly relax. And as it relaxes, then your leg will just sink lower because gravity will be able to pull it. But if you're pushing and forcing it to go down further, it's going to resist and it's going to make it harder. And it will never get as far as it otherwise might. So just allow it to relax. Don't force it. And just let that leg move as far into that side motion as it wants to go. So the longer you stay relaxed in this position, the further the leg will go toward the floor. And as you relax and let it happen, just notice how far a little incremental change may occur. And if you want, as it gets further down, you can keep pulling it in the direction of your head as well. So just allow your body to go wherever it wants. And keep relaxing. The relaxing is the really important part of moving a little bit incrementally further. And then still pulling on the toes, Go ahead and slowly let that leg rotate back up toward the ceiling. And again, as it gets up, you're going to pull the leg maybe a little closer toward your head as it's stretched through those inner thigh and hip area muscles. And then switch the strap to your left hand, if you've got your right leg up, opposite hand. Other arm comes down again, palm up or down, your choice. We're going to roll into that side stretch on the opposite side. So keep pulling on the base of your toes. Your whole right hip, if you're on the right leg, is going to come up. And you're going to roll over onto the left side of your hip as you come into that twist position. So if that's strenuous on your shoulder and your middle back, you don't have to bring the leg down to the floor. You can keep the shoulder on the floor and the leg suspended, pulling on your strap. So just go as far as your body wants into that twist position, still pulling those toes toward you and the leg up toward your head as you get into that twist position, as much or as little as your body wants. And again, you can turn your head and look at that arm behind you for your neck and shoulder twist as you're in this position as well. And don't forget to breathe. And of course, relax, especially through the leg, through the head. Breathing, exhaling tension. And as you're in that twist as far as it wants to go, again, just relaxing and breathing. 
Letting your body do what is right for your body. And when you're ready to again release, just slowly pulling on your toes as you roll back onto your back and bring that leg back. And again, as you get all the way up and onto your back fully, you can again just pull that leg maybe a little closer towards your head as things may have stretched out a little bit. And then we're going to either keep holding onto the strap as you slowly lower the leg or releasing the strap and using your abdominals for support as you bring that leg slowly to the floor. And again, just relax. Feel the difference between the two sides. And of course, get your strap ready for the other side. So sitting bones towards your heels, back connected, bend that opposite leg, and put the strap around the base of your toes. And then you can bring that leg back up straight and relax through the sacrum lower back area, pressing out through the heel on that right leg, through the heel on the left leg also, and pulling on the strap on the base of your toes, just bring that leg up as far as it wants to go. Strap around the base of your toes, bottom of your foot pushing away. Again, the more you pull that kneecap up towards your thigh and let the thigh tighten a little on the front, the more that back of your leg can straighten with that hamstring stretch. And again, just keep moving that foot in the direction of your head as much as it wants to go. Very flexible people may have it go really close to your body, or it may just stay upright, or it may not even get all the way perpendicular. Just let your body do what's right for you. You can hold with both hands or one hand and make sure that that right hip is staying down if you've got the left leg up this time. And again, just relax there and allow the back of your leg to get as much stretch as it wants and that pivot at the hip joint coming toward your head. And then shifting that strap to your left hand, right arm out, palm up or down, or on your right hip to keep it connected. And again, just lower that leg as you pull on the strap, letting the leg come down toward the floor on that left side as far as it wants to go. So take a moment and breathe. Exhale. Let the muscles relax. So big muscles in the leg, they will take a little while to release. So make sure you're breathing a lot, just allowing your body to do what it needs as it moves into its position. And again, exhaling, relaxing, gently allowing that leg to get as far toward the floor as it wants. Try to keep that right hip down as you're in that position. So again, the arm can be out to the side or the hand on the hip. Breathing into that thigh area, relaxing those muscles, just allowing the side of your foot to move a little further toward the floor. And again, it may get there, it may not, it doesn't really matter. It's up to your body how far it wants to go. So once more, keep pulling the foot in the direction of your head as your body is willing to do that, and allowing that leg to drop further and further toward the floor as you relax. Deep breaths, just letting tension out. And again, when you have enough, you're still pulling on the base of the toes and letting that leg rotate back up toward the ceiling. And again, pull it maybe a little closer to your head as things have released or not. And just keep pushing out through the toes, through the heel as you pull on the base of the toes with the strap. And again, we're going into our final twist. So switch the hands on the strap, bring that hand behind you, and roll over to the this right side. So again, just shift onto the side of that hip as you bring the side of your foot to the floor or in the direction of the floor. 
Keep pushing on the base of the toes with the strap and turn your head toward the left arm, keeping your shoulder and arm down for that middle back twist. So again, the foot may stay up or it may get all the way to the floor, depending on how deeply your twist works on this side. So once more, just go wherever your body needs to go. Breathing deep, just relaxing into your twist. And then as you get as far down as you want, you can again pull on the strap, bringing the foot a little further in the direction of your head if it wants to do that or not. Your choice, your body. And again, breathing deep, shoulder, shoulder blades down, head turning, your whole body as deeply into that twist as it wants to go. And again, don't forget, you're relaxing. The more you relax, the more you exhale, the more things release. So just deepen as far as you want. And when you're ready to roll back, just pulling on the base of the toes, bringing your leg again toward the ceiling. And you can bring both hands to the strap. Pull that leg a little closer in the direction of your head if it wants to go there. But first down. And again, you can release the strap or keep holding on to the strap and leading with the heel, connecting with the core, bringing that leg again slowly. Two. Release your hands, palms up, relax, settling that sacrum down, shoulders, shoulder blades into the surface beneath you as well. Take a deep breath and just relax. And it's time for a relaxation. So just put your strap aside, letting your body sink into that surface beneath you. Just close your eyes, scanning through your body, noticing what's been activated by our practice today. Maybe a lot in the hips and pelvis or the back of your leg, maybe even your ankles. Relax through your torso and shoulders as well. Take a breath. Exhale tension. And as you breathe more deeply, just let your body grow heavy. Sinking, letting any tension or tightness in the hips or pelvis or anywhere else release. And as your body relaxes, just let it sink deep into that earthly embrace. And exhale in tension, letting the tightness go. Softening and sinking. Fully supported. No need to think of your body, just let it go. And as you begin breathing more deeply, you notice that other thoughts will come to your mind as you do these thoughts of your body. Just let those thoughts disappear as well. No need to remember the past, no need to anticipate the future, no need to think about any content of your thoughts. Just let the thoughts flow in and out as easily as your breath. Fill your mind with breath. Fill your mind with peace. Let the content of the thoughts release as you exhale, floating away, unneeded, unnoticed. And as your body relaxes deeper into the earth's surface, the mind floats more freely into the air. Let your awareness focus deeply into that peace, filling your awareness with peace, your body with peace, peace in your mind. Just
And as always, feel free to keep relaxing as long as you need or want to. Otherwise, begin drawing energy and awareness back with the breath to your body. Breathing more deeply, moving your body gently as you become aware of yourself. Just breathing more freely, stretching your body gently. And when you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, press your back to the floor and draw your knees towards your heart. Just wrap your arms around as much as you'd like for your final yoga hug of appreciation. And let your body know you appreciate its yoga work today and every day, as well as the work your body does for you at all times. And when you're ready to release from your feet to the mat, or roll to the side, and sit back up, just getting ready for whatever's ahead for you the rest of the day. Thanks for joining me. Have a good day.